Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. So today's video, I will be working on my front porch makeover. And this is probably one of the biggest transformations I've done on my channel in a very long time. So I hope y'all enjoy and let's go ahead and get started. All right, so here is a quick before clip of how the front door looked before we got the new to us door that my dad recently gave us. I was so excited about this door, it's absolutely gorgeous. And if y'all don't know anything about doors, they are super, super expensive. So I was beyond excited to get this one. Um, but if you look closely, you can see our front porch area was pretty stained up. All around the trim work, it needed a fresh coat of paint. Um, even the side of the house had a lot of concrete splatters all over it because the previous owner to us laid this concrete slab after they painted the house yellow. So you can see all those marks all the way down the house. And I decided to do a lot of touch-ups today and really just transform the front of my house because it desperately needed it. So I'm starting off by just blowing off all the leaves and then I'm going to jump right into painting the side of the house with some old paint that the old previous owner left behind. I'm not sure what color it is. It doesn't say on the container, but all I know is that I am just painting over all these concrete splatters and anywhere that needs a fresh coat of paint. Already packing, come with me. I'm not really asking. We'll get away to a place where we don't know. About to see the world in action, what we can be. Life with no distractions, we'll get away. This is what we waited for. So I quickly wanted to mention that the hand painter that I'm using right now is amazing. If you're someone who does a lot of projects or paints like bigger things, definitely pick one of these up next time that you're at the store. It will change your life. They are great. And then I'm just taking a paintbrush to get really low um, to the concrete down here at the bottom of the house. This part was really textured, so I couldn't really use the hand painter this low, but I did the best I could at making this look a little bit better. And then right after painting the house and doing all the touch-ups, I went in with this Valspar, the perfect white paint. And this is an exterior paint, by the way. That way it will last. And I just painted all the trim work really good. I think I did two coats on... Yeah, I did two coats around the trim on the windows and then three coats on around the door frame. That way, I don't know, just the door frame gets a lot more use. So I wanted to make sure that was really coated and that it would last. I think that I'm going to hiding Somewhere by a gated star Baby, they ain't never gonna find me I'm a renegade oh. I could be the one who saved you from this hard place We could be as one and we'll escape We could run away, we don't gotta stay So while I was painting, my sweet little Zoe decides that she wants to try to sneak off. <laughs> and she waited till the perfect opportunity when I wasn't watching. Look at her look at me to see if I was watching. And she's like, oh, I'm leaving. <laughs> she went for a little stroll. <laughs> I don't know where she went. But when I noticed that she was, well, Caden actually noticed that she was gone. He said, Mom, where's Zoe? I was like, I don't know. <laughs> and then she come around the corner of the car. I obviously, I don't think she left the yard, but I just thought it was funny that she decided to take a little stroll whenever I wasn't watching. I'm out of reasons. I'm out of rhyme. But I'll only tell you that I'm out of time. I'm sick of love songs. I'm tired of this. All right, so after painting all the trim white, I went ahead and started on the concrete. So I'm using the Glidden Porch and Floor Paint in the color dark gray, 
and I am starting off by just trimming out along the house and along all the columns and stuff and then I'm going to go ahead and roll this on. So the only prep work I did on the concrete was just make sure I blew it off and tried to make sure all the leaves and sticks were up. Unfortunately, it was a very windy day, so every time I turned around, a leaf was blowing on the paint. But it still turned out really great, and it covered up all the stains, which is, which is exactly what I was looking for. So I'm very, very happy with the finished product, and I feel like this paint works pretty well. I will say, though, it is super hard to apply to concrete, so make sure that you get the right type of roller. I used one that was for, like, textured walls, and I thought it would be, you know, nappy enough, but it wasn't. Definitely make sure you get something that is very nappy. That way it goes into the grooves really easily. All right, so next up is this old rocking chair that was recently given to me by my brother and sister-in-law, and then my mom gave me this old stand, so I'm going to put a fresh coat of spray paint on these and bring them back to life. And today I'm using the Rust-Oleum spray paint in the satin finish and the color black, and I'm going to do two coats on the rocking chair and two coats on that little stand. By the way, I absolutely love the spray paints that have the trigger instead of the button that you push with your index finger. It just makes it so much easier to spray paint whenever you have the trigger. Your finger doesn't get sore and I feel like it just gives a better finish. So if you are new to spray painting, definitely look for the kind that have the pull trigger instead. Um, it will just make it a lot easier for you and it won't kill your hand. <laughs> um, and by the way, I know the rocking chair looks a little splotchy right here, but after the second coat that did go away. So if that ever happens to you, don't worry just try another coat and then go from there um, you may have to like stand in between just depending on the finish but luckily for this rocking chair I was able to do two coats without sanding and it is holding up great we've already rocked on it the kids have climbed all over it and it looks really really beautiful Alright, so now moving on to the front door. I was really trying hard to salvage the red door. <laughs> I didn't want to paint it. I love the red color, but we had to change out the deadbolt and the people who painted the door red didn't paint behind the deadbolt. So you could see where the wood was showing after we put the new one on. So I was going to try to spray paint it black and see if I could like make it look okay. It didn't end up working out. It looked terrible. So I went ahead and painted the whole door. But I am using the Rust-Oleum spray paint in the matte finish to do a fresh coat of paint on the deadbolt and the handle. That way they match. So after spray painting the handle and the deadbolt, you know, all the same color, it looked really good except for when I pulled off that black or that blue tape. And then I had like the faux deadbolt square. It looked terrible. It looked so cheap. So I decided that my only... um option was to paint the door. I could have went with a lighter color, but I already had this whole gallon of paint, um, of black paint that I plan on using for the interior doors of my house. And a um, Lowe's employee actually recommended it to me. She said it worked really great for exterior doors and interior doors. So I was like, you know what, I'll try it and we'll see what happens. I painted the entire door black, did the first coat, everything looked great. I was super in love with it. 
By the time I did the second coat, I realized, yeah, maybe this wasn't the best paint to use for the door, especially somewhere that's super humid like Florida but it's holding up okay. Um, I've only had a few issues. There was one little spot that bubbled a, a couple times and I sanded it down, repainted it, and it looks fine. And it hasn't bubbled since, so I'm hoping that it holds up okay. So I don't wanna recommend this paint to you guys and y'all use it and have the same issue. Just definitely do your research before you buy door paint because the last thing I want is for y'all to paint your door and it start peeling or chipping really bad. And I just, I'm not sure how this is going to hold up, but I'll keep you updated. Um, but it looks good so far. So <laughs> um, I'm happy with the finish. I just truly hope that it lasts. By the way, worst case scenario, I will sand the door down and repaint it and I will learn from this mistake. Just like every other project that I might have had like a little mess up on, I've learned from those mistakes and I have made sure not to make the same mistake twice. <laughs> um, as someone who does a ton of DIY projects, I want y'all to know that there are so many times where I mess up. I couldn't even count on my fingers and toes how many projects I've messed up. Like, pretty much all of them. But, guess what? I learned from them, and I've gotten better and better over time. My decorating style has gotten better, and I am not trying to, like, toot my own horn or anything, but I do feel like, over time, my projects have gotten better, and that's all because I've learned. I have just gotten, you know, more comfortable with what I've been doing, and... You know, it's all a learning process, so don't ever give up. Keep trying, and you will eventually perfect your craft, and you'll be really good at it. Alright, so now moving on to decorating the space. I am using these two pots that were similar in size. Um, the one was brown, so I just quickly spray painted it black. And then I'm adding my two ferns that I recently bought from Lowe's. They were on sale for two for 20 bucks, and I tried my best to find the fluffiest, greenest <laughs> ferns that I could possibly find. So I put those in the pots, and then I'm gonna go grab my rocking chair now that it's nice and dry and I'm gonna go ahead and finish decorating the space. So whenever I was brainstorming how I was going to redecorate the space, I knew that I wanted to keep a pretty neutral theme. That way I could use a lot of the items that I already had on hand and that everything would just flow really nicely together. So I went with greenery with the white flowers and then I added a really pretty pop of color to the rocking chair. That pillow came from Walmart for five bucks, so super inexpensive. And then I found a really cute doormat from Walmart. It says hello on it and it was like 11 bucks. I added that and a old rug that I had on hand underneath of it for a layered effect. And then the last thing that I'm going to do is, well, my husband's going to do is add a new light fixture. So this light came from Lowe's and I will link it below if I can find it online. It was 50 bucks, but I feel like it's a very timeless look, so it will last a very long time. And I feel like it really made a huge difference on the front porch. And a quick little tip if you're looking for lighting, but you want to stay like inexpensive, what I like to do is get on Pinterest or wherever you can find a good inspiration photo. Um, I look at what they have and then I go into Lowe's or look on Amazon and I find something very similar. That way I get the look, but I also do it on a budget. Oh, look at it! Look at it! It looks so nice! I love it! I wish I had matching ones on each side. It'd be super cool. All right, so this is the best part of today's video, the before and afters. So here is a quick reminder how it looked before, and this is what it looks like now. I lose my breath whenever I see you. You stole my heart, what is it that you do? 
that is going to be it for today's video. I really hope you enjoyed watching me transform my front porch on a budget. And if you want to see more videos like this, don't forget to subscribe if you're new. And please give this video a thumbs up and share it with a friend. I really appreciate it so much. Thank you again for watching today's video and I will see y'all in my next one. Bye y'all. Just wanna love you, just wanna hold you, just wanna be with you till we grow old. Please tell me you'll stay.